okay we're in the step one verizon router which is this one and it is faster than at zero slash zero we have 10.10 .10, and in ethernet one slash zero we have 15.1 this is the network block 15.1.15.027 this is slash 29 mask this is 2 a slash 29 mask the ip block is 0 to 7 here ip block is 8 to 15 here and 0 to 7 is here we're going to copy this i guess i don't have to copy from there i can copy from here and this is the isp router if you see the name has been changed we are going to copy the loopback interface as well okay let's verify that okay 0 slash 0 we have 10.10 .10. 8 1 slash 0 we have 15.1 see this one and then loopback is 180.100.1 this loopback interface 100.80.100.1 is representing the isp connection to here okay, it's done so let's save it now i'll go to the isp.1 and in its gig 0 slash 0 we will have 10.9 and its gig 0 slash 5 will have the ip through the actual nick of my physical host which is 192.168.10.0 network and then in its gig 0 slash 4 we'll have ips from the first block 10.1 in its gig 0 slash 2 we'll have 10.17 and in gig 0 slash 1 we'll have 10.25 i would suggest you to take a snapshot if you're having difficulties when i'm configuring through the script so that a snapshot will help you to understand better anyway so let's copy this copy paste and then i'll do the ip assignment i can copy the entire thing Okay, now as I have said, we will do the interface authentication for OSPF. All these interfaces needs to be authenticated for OSPF because we are going to use all the networks from these interfaces. So I'm selecting all the interfaces with the range command. And then I have to say IP OS authentication message digest. IP OS message digest key one. This is the key one. MD5 is the hashing mechanism and Cisco this is the password it could be anything so let's copy from here now let's verify gig 0 slash 0 we have 10.9 interface is up in gig 0 slash 1 we have 10.25 which is this one port is up gig 0 slash 3 is unused that's why it's unassigned gig 0 slash 4 we have 10.1 port is up and in gig 0 slash 5 we have the ip from my physical host okay everything looks okay so we can save it okay now we will go to the isp router 2 in gig 0 slash 0 again we'll have the ip from my physical host in gig 0 slash 5 we'll have 15.2 same ip block in gig 0 slash 4 we'll have 10.2 this is the ip block gig 0 slash 2 we will have 15.17 this is the ip block 16 to 23 and then in gig 0 slash 1 we'll have 15.25 this is the ip block in gig 0 slash 3 we'll have 177.75.75.100.1 this is the public ip by this ip we'll have our remote router connected to our network and then Finally, we'll authenticate all the interfaces except the gig 0 slash 3 because the network in gig 0 slash 3 is not going to be in the OSPF's routing table. So let's go to the prop. Nothing to explain. We'll simply copy and paste. okay let's save it everything looks okay we have done the Verizon router which is ISP1 then there's nothing to configure for this cloud node we've finished the configuration for ISP router 1 ISP router 2 and for the switch external 1 2 and switch internal 1 2 also this switch the switch internal server we are not going to do anything there we will live as it is and it will act like unmanageable switch
with that being said let's move forward to the core switch one and core switch two yes i'm skipping this asa configuration as of now we'll do that later because we need to do active active failover and for that we need to configure the security context it will take time so let's finish the core switch distribution and access and then we'll come to the asa so let's go to core switch one and this core switch configuration. let's take a snapshot it will help us to understand better okay this is the core switch one we are configuring we don't need to explain this this is just changing the name look at the ip assignment interface eth 2 slash 1 which is this one we have 10.33 and this is slash 29 mask in the ethernet 0 slash 3 we have 10.41 here it is and then interface eth 2 slash 0 which is here we have 1049 slash 29 mask and then we are going to configure ether channel here ether channel here so we will have two layer 3 ether channel and we know how to configure ether channel however i'm just going to show you the commands interface eth range i'm selecting this two interface 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 and then no switch port of course it's a layer 3 so it has to be routable so we have to say no switch port and then channel group 1 more active we are configuring the Cisco link aggregation control protocol LSCP so it has to be active active in both ends we also have pack P we can say on on in both ends and this is how it becomes pack P but we are configuring LSCP so it has to be active active in both ends and then no shut this configuration is for the physical interfaces and now this is the logical interface now we have to merge the logical interface to the physical so we have to say interface po1 again this command has to be typed in this range command so we'll say interface port channel 1 no switch port whatever we configure in the physical interface the same command follows for the logical otherwise the ether channel will not be functional and then we have to finally give the ip address and we are giving a slash 24 mask class full c subnet mask 1111 and 255 255 255.0 and then no shut then we are configuring another layer 3 ether channel in this port ethernet 1 slash 0 and ethernet 1 slash 1 here and we are going to give the ip address is 2.2.2.1 again that would be a slash 24 mask very identical commands with the first ether channel the only difference is it is port channel 2 this is port channel 1 of course the interface are different and the ips are different and then if we want we can shut down the unnecessary ports but let's skip that and then we have to authenticate the interfaces that is going to be in the ospf routing table basically all these interfaces like all these interfaces are going to be in the ospf routing table so we literally have to authenticate all these interfaces so interface range eth 2 slash 1 this one and then eth 0 slash 3 this one and then eth 2 slash 0 which is this one and then port channel 1 and port channel 2 i think maximum six interfaces you can select with the range command to the best i can remember i think it is six interfaces if it's more than six you have to type another range command but anyway let's copy and paste that okay it's done now we can verify that to see four channels are down because we have not configured the ether channel on the other end for the ether channel 2 we have to configure this distribution switch one as well to bring this port up also we have to configure ether channel as well in the core switch 2 to bring the ether channel 1 up okay couple of commands to verify the ether channel we can say we can say show ether channel summary you can see we have two channel groups number of aggregators two and then group of port channel port channel one indicates ru so r means layer three and u means in use so that means our layer three ether channel is in use and that is up but look at what it says for port channel two rd d means down r means again the layer three here but we know why it is down because we have not configured the distribution switch one these interfaces to bring the ether channel one up we can also say show ether channel port channel 
it is going to give us a little bit more detail about the ether channel as you can see here but anyway we are not going to dig detail about the ether channel here let's move to core switch 2 let's save it okay this is core switch 2 very identical configuration just a naming change and then 15.33 in the ethernet 2 slash 1 they all are slash 29 mask in the ethernet 0 slash 3 we have 15.41 and then in the ethernet 2 slash 0 which is here 15.49 and this two interface is going to be ether channel 2 this is going to be our ether channel 1 for the core switch 2 and then we are going to assign 3.3.3.1 slash 24 mask in the ether channel 2 in the ether channel 1 we are going to give 1 slash 2 we have 1 slash 1 on the other end okay let's do that let's verify that so we can save it okay now we'll forward to our distribution layer switches so we'll start from the distribution switch 1 and then we'll move to the distribution switch 2 so this is again our script this is a snapshot let's understand the command so th we are going to configure this switch now again that is just the name if you see distribution switch 1 and then in the ethernet 0 slash 2 we have 15.50 slash 29 mask and then here we are going to configure our layer 2 ether channel so in the distribution layer we have both layer 2 and layer 3 we know that in layer 2 we do not need any IP it is not required but for layer 3 as we have done before in course switch we have to assign the IPs so this is ether channel 1 this is ether channel 2 in the distribution layer we are going to give some IPs here if you notice we have given 2.1 here we are going to give 2.2 here in the distribution they are from the same block if you notice here we do not have any IPs very basic command for the layer 3 we have to select this range and then no switch port channel group 2 more active no shut interface PO2 because this is the ether channel 2 and then no switch port and 2.2 we are only going to authenticate the uplinks here for the distribution layer we are not using these interfaces for our OSP of routing table we are going to use HSRP instead for the interval and routing so it is not required to authenticate these interfaces we are only going to authenticate the uplinks for both distribution layer switches so ether channel 2 and ether slash 2 same here ether channel 2 and ether slash 2 here so that's why it says interface range ETH 0 slash 2 and port channel 2 and then it is the same authentication mechanism commands are very identical for the distribution switch 2 as well again it's just a name change and then ETH 0 slash 2 we have 10.50 which is this one and then layer 2 ether channel 1 for this range 1 slash 0 and 0 slash 3 and then for 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 0 that would be a layer 3 ether channel and that is ether channel 2 for distribution switch 2 we will have 3.2 here because 3.1 is here in the course switch 2 so 3.2 will be here ip is again from the same block slash 24 mask and then finally we'll authenticate our uplinks e0 slash 2 and port channel 2 the ether channel 2 with that being said, let's copy and paste it. Now we'll go to the distribution switch 2 and we'll verify it together at the end. Okay, let's verify that I'm in the distribution switch to the first command I type show IP interface brief and then if we notice we have our port channel up because we have configured either channel in both ends and we just have one IP 10.15 this is slash 2 let's go to the distribution switch 1 let's the same command show IP interface brief 15 on 50 which is this one and then port channel is up okay let's set the configuration 
for distribution switch one and this is number two. Okay, now we are in the access layer switch. We have four access layer switches in four floor. If we see that here, floor one, floor two, floor three, and floor four. The commands are very identical. It's just a name change. If you see for the switch one, access switch one, for the switch two, the host name is switch two, switch three, the host name is switch three, and for the switch four, it's switch four. That's it. So we are going to copy and paste all together in the respective switches. Let's bring the console basically nothing to verify after we copy and paste we'll be able to see it from here because the name will change access switch 1 this is access switch 2 if you see the name has been changed here as well this is access switch 3 access switch 4 and we can save all the configuration by just saying Now we've finished the four access switches as well. With that being done, we have finished our uh, step one. Now we will move forward for uh, step two and we will configure the failure one for ASA one and ASA two. So I'll see you in my next step.